What's up everybody, this is Braz, also known as Naked Snake or Revolver Ocelot inside of the community uh, of Foxhole. Uh, I'm a French Canadian so you may hear some words pr wrongly pronounced uh, during this video but bear with me and give me a chance. If it's bothering you too much I will have all the things that we're gonna talk about inside of the description as a text. So uh, I hope the devs gonna maybe take a look at this and uh, other player that likes to know how the game is made uh, like systems behind the game. I have over a thousand hours inside of the game and my girlfriend has over 300 hours and uh, I bought the game around 2017 or 18. Now I know the dev team behind the game is small so the things that we're gonna talk about here today will be reali realistic I think. But I will try to present two ways they can end all our demand. Right now the game has a lot of content and the meta is pretty good. I'm gonna make a separate video about the three big meta of uh, Foxhole created by you, the community. So make sure to subscribe and hit that bell to not miss that video. I think it's a good time not to add new system but make the existent one better. Before we start the top 10, I just wanna say if you have something in your mouth. Before we start the top 10, at any moment during the video, if you disagreed or if you have something to say about the things that I'm talking currently in the video, just press pause, go into the comment section and unleash the beast. And after that, start back the video. Uh, don't wait at the end because I'm gonna talk about a lot of stuff. And if you have a better idea, don't be scared to write it down into the comment section. I'm pretty sure somebody will look it and uh, post it inside of the Reddit or Discord and maybe even the devs team will take a look at the comment section. We never know. Just remember that all the things that we're going to talk about today are my suggestions. But I took some uh, great idea from the community and uh, included it inside of this top 10. So now that's all been out of the way let's start this video number 10 more quality of life update I'm putting this as number 10 because I feel we should not have to talk about that but we do quality of life update should happen every three to four months maybe even less and should be a combination of technical problem and high demand fixes example players should be able to access the option selection during the waiting of the respawning timer and not have to wait after spawning back inside of the world conquest when starting a new game most players after getting killed will go into the option selection and make some changes to their settings when they spawning back in the world they are ready for action the devs are doing a great job and taking their time to understand what is the community wants for years and for this let's give them a round of applause there are many more examples for quality of life, but I'm not going to go through all of them. But I'm just gonna say that the option selection inside of the game uh, really needs a revamp. Every time I'm logging in, I have to reset my keybind or else my tab doesn't work. And when I do it, it literally eliminates some uh, things. All the other games have uh, dedicated windows for the graphic part and uh, not all uh, inside of the first thing. We cannot control the sound. Everything is just all mashed up to, for the setting. Let's right now jump to number 9 because uh, like I said I don't really want to talk about quality of life update inside of a top 10 but I feel like it should have been there because it's not enough consistent to um, fix like high demand bugs like this, small bugs. Quality of life update should be only about small bugs and high demand fixes. Number 9. Safe mode for streamers. I think inside of the option selection, whether if you're in the main menu or while in game, there should be a streaming tab where player can turn off and turn on the safe mode for streamers. This will grant the ability to record Foxhole application or live stream safely. This will give more tool to the community of content creator from Foxhole. Players should be able to decide if they're gonna turn on or turn off things like safe map, region name, safe text chat, safe server list, more on that on number two. Safe stockpile, safe player inventory, and more. How it should work. So I think the best way to do this would be to create a mirror application, projecting a running game but in a safe mode for streaming, with the option of blocking visibility from all the things I just mentioned. This would kind of look like when you're removing all the UI by pressing F8 on your keyboard, only this time showing off things like the line of the dot when aiming and some other stuff. In simple words, Foxel itself should not get detected by capture device like OBS or other streaming recording software. 
Only the Foxhole safe mode application should be detected and fined by these softwares. You maybe have a number linked to your Steam account showing off underneath your weapon icon, kind of like Fade. So this will mean that the player is not using the streaming, the safe streaming tab and the other player can tell him that uh, if he would be using it, he would have access to a lot of uh, tools for streamer. Bonus! I'm gonna throw this one real quick because I think we should really be able to choose your own name inside of the game. And this has been dealt with uh, from the last dev stream. I'm so glad that they made it. And uh, thanks dev, it's been years that people want that, uh, at least clans. But I think we should be able to change our name of the character because uh, let's say that uh, big celebrity or uh, big streamers uh, are coming to play the game and they don't want to show their real Steam account name so uh, they don't get fucking invade by a uh, friend's request. Uh, I think, yeah, we should be able to change our name too. Uh, just put a number, like I said, attached to the player character and uh, if you inspect a character, somebody, a player, then you can see his uh, Steam number and we can like report him. Dev will still be able to access real names from player if they get report and uh, us players we only see the character's name of everybody not the steam name this could be really cool and uh, foxhall is all about building your reputation number eight community squads and clans do you know what makes an mmo truly special it's when the world becomes the main character the player is the story and the community is the content. In Foxhole we have all of these. Now we just need tools to interact in between each other. The clan system will act as a guild and will only need it to be created once, so we'll carry on for each war. There should be no limit on how many players can join inside of a clan, since there is no voice chat inside of the clan system. I have nothing to say about squads, they can still act as party, but should be used for a party than less than 30 players. More on that on number 6. The clan system needs to have his own window. Here's some suggestions for the clan system. It should have his own window and we should be able to see from where the clan will operate this war. So basically clans leader can set home for the clans at the beginning of any war to show the other clans from where they're gonna operate this war. Inside the clan window we should also be able to see the contribution of the clan for the ongoing war. So inside of the clan window we should be able to search for other clans and to look our clan that were in it right now and uh, when clicking on a clan we should be able to see the contribution for each clan and uh, the list of player we should also see a uh, language selection when searching for clans so we got a search and bar and the tab to select the language we should be able to see a brief description and the specialization of the clan. From there you can apply to join or join in if the clan is open to all. There should be a total of 5 or more specialization for a clan. So leader when creating a clan, he has to choose a specialization of the clan, what it will be. And he should be able to change it after that at any time. Number 1 should be attacker. Number 2 should be defender. Number 3 should be logistic. Number 4 should be engineers. And number 5 should be medic. So when clicking on a guild you can see the description and the specialization from there you can make your decision Is it the right guild for you for your playstyle? Clans should be able to make alliance with other clans This will make preparation for operations inside of the game much more easier for everybody Here's some tools we will like related to clans and the map when looking at the map We need a toggle inside of the map legend for only seeing fob or frontier base or base any kind of base While looking at the map, we need to toggle on and off inside of the map legend for only seeing base like FUB, Frontier Base and Bunker Base from our clan. Toggle on and off to see the clan's alliance base so we can see where is our alliance base is. While looking at the map, we want the ability to put on strategic plan onto the map, meaning like a red bar, a red circle and uh, all those should be shapeable at any size. It could be put as public so anybody can see the map post or it can be put as clan and alliance so your alliance knows the plan and uh, your clan too 
we can prepare plans before going into the operation. Right now everything is dealt by Discord, it's really cool to see all the community, but this will only make the game more easier and it will be more cool to have the plan onto the map so people can actually remember and execute plans well, operations. While looking at the map it would be cool if clans, leader or officers can put a different type of map post onto the map saying that the clans will soon attack this city. Inside of the clan window we should also be seeing uh, Yayashi. Yaya Yayashi. When going inside of the clan window we should be able to see all the players inside of the clan and there should be a uh, Yayashi, Yayashi. We should be able to see who is uh, has watch grade. They already said that's going to be implemented, but it will be cool to have a dedicated window and seeing like some kind of rank system all on top and like all the ads and I don't know player icon soon maybe. I mean new player icon soon. And this should be accessible when searching for any clans uh, inside of the clan window. So when clicking on a clan we should be able to see the brief description, the clan specialization and the hierarchy. So meaning all the player inside of the clan. And so this will make things more easy when you want to talk to uh, somebody high rank inside of a clan to make a preparation for an operation or to make an alliance. So player will see and will know who is to which player to talk to. They're not gonna talk to a recruit, you know, they're gonna talk to... They should also be able to see if the player is connected or not, so they can whisper to him. I think player from a clan or from a squad should be able to see each other with a different type of color inside of the map when looking onto the map. Uh, like Colonial should be able to see uh, lime green kind of and uh, more light green and uh, Warden should be able to see a different type of blue uh, for their squad's member. Maybe not all the clans but at least for the squad. So you can stay with your squad and if you have let's say the radio on you and they're in the side of a tower range you can see them and go to them, not have to only rely on following the squad leader. There should be a tab inside of the Windows clan where you can see the war contribution for all the clans. So this will act as a leaderboard and will show maybe the top 10 in the first page and we can see all the page to see all the clans, uh, their contribution for the ongoing war. And uh, it's, it's really important because this will tell player which clan is dead and which clan is actually uh, active because uh, yeah it's really we lost our leaderboard for all the uh, past war this really hurts me and uh, i think uh, giving a new leaderboard for clans showing off their contribution for the ongoing war could be really cool and one last thing about this subject uh, it's more about boosting the morals of this troop and giving life into the world squads should be able to claim town hall and spawnable base uh, as their main operation base so meaning when you're putting your cursor onto the map you can see if uh, you're aiming at the town hall or spawn base if you press tab we could see a, a separate window there we can see all the clans that lives in the city or lives in the spawn base and uh, this will tell player uh, which bob and which fob there are supplying and uh, from which clan it's coming so it's really cool, it's gonna only give a, a moral troop, if a base get attacked you check the, the, the town hall, you see all the clans that lives there, so yeah it's really about like giving life to the world, I think this would be really cool if clans can claim a spawnable base and town hall as their hometown, it gives nothing as advantage, it only tells player who lives there and this will bring life to the world. And do not worry, multiple clan can claim the same town, so this shouldn't be a problem. I have much more things to say about the community tools and the squad or clans tools. Don't forget to write comments down there if you got something on this subject. We're going for the next number. Number 7. Add-ons and custom in-game UI. One thing that makes massively multiplayer online game usually more friendly user is the ability to customize your gameplay experience by moving the UI. Or there is usually some add-ons that we can install to change the UI experience that will fit each different type of player. 
Sometimes it can be an add-on that gives the gameplay more details. Sometimes it can change the user UI. It can even even it can give it can give in and it can even give a new map with deeper information. Right now, a little bit of all this is uh, already in, ga in the game and it's called MUDs. But it shouldn't be called MUDs because we don't uh, mod uh, an online game. We we put add-on in it. I think it should be called add-ons and it should be like integrate inside of the game. I really think any in-game UI should be movable or disabled at least. Uh, we need this patch, uh, we need this update as a quality of life update as soon as they can. Because the party squad has fucked up my gameplay so many times. Even if we cannot click on it while aiming uh, it's still in the way and it's blocking my view we, I would like to move it I would like to move the chat uh, when accessing the uh, inventory player I would like to move the player inventory on right side so I can see my character I'm pretty sure everyone likes to arrange their UI in their own way and this is why the user UI needs to be customizable this is just a small detail but it's really important I would love to see in the player inventory or just in the user UI when you're playing a timer of how many time you spend with the same shirt. Okay, calm down Asmin Gold. No, I mean with the same life, you know? And you can tell yourself if you're a waste of shirt or you're making a shit ton of progress. More on that on number three. I think it would be really cool if we could have some icon at the bottom of the screen showing off the different window we can access, like the tabs for the inventory, escape for the menu, B for build, F1 for the player list in the region, and now the clans window. Those icons should be all visible at the bottom of the screen. Those are some minor things to implement but are really needed and will make the game more easier for new players. Even for veterans, still it can be turned off inside of the option to customize your UI. I think the death screams needs a little bit of work. The death cams following the next soldier to you is perfect, I love it. But I'm talking about when you're making your choice to which base you're gonna respond to. I'm never really sure where I'm gonna spawn, and every time I click something I click the wrong thing. I think we need a picture on the sides that shows the map location of the base where you're gonna respawn. And I think this will give a better understanding on where they're gonna respawn because even me I get I get teleported back at some far away place sometimes. Number six esports and competitive leagues. Esports is a big topic, like always. Even if the game can't make a big prize pool, it's completely normal. Even Company of Hero 2 tournament has only 8k for the prize pool. So I don't think right now it's about the money. I think players play in a competitive way to show that their clan is the best at what they do. Or that the faction they play is the best. But no one knows what the esports future is for this game. Did you know that we just finished season 5 of Fuxel last year's? And that we're going through season 6 this year's? But I think it's been temporarily cancelled don't quote me on this I've been following a little bit of the discord but I'm gonna link the discord of the official uh, competitive leagues of Fuxel I'm sure that everybody would like to see the stats from all the past uh, tournament of the game or at least some little details to give light to all the clans who has passed in the Fuxel competitive leagues before but for now I want to talk about the competitive leagues because the dev should put a casual game mode like a skirmish of 30 player versus 30 player with a unlimited resources and another game mode more in a competitive way a skirmish of 20 versus 20 with limited resources those game modes should last about 20 to 40 minutes and would play out in a smaller region like the version they use of Tempest Island during the FCL 2 tournament or other maps from the FCL series it could be so cool and would give chance to everyone to try it for sure on the downsides this would remove player from the world conquest for some player this is a special event and they want to keep the competitive league skirmish game mode a once in a year event, it's true. But I think keeping this great mode only for a choosing few clans is really bad. And I'm sure a lot of people would like to practice for that one time in a year event. But it could also be very good when the world conquest has a queue. I'm talking about a global queue for every region almost. People will be able to go in that casual skirmish game mode and play that instead of closing the game because they face a shit ton of player in front of the region they want to play in. Hell, player might even stay during the resistance phase. But more on that on number 5. Casual skirmish match should have unlimited node in all resources field, unlimited basic items and small arms inside of town hall that is strategic on, on the maps. This does not include HE grenade or basic material. 
and the technology of the game should be voted at the beginning of every game by all the players inside of the lobby. They should be able to vote for three different technology time of the war that the game can be set in. Number one, early war. Number two, mid war. Number three, late war. This will give the skirmish match much more replayability. The time for those casual skirmish should not be more than 40 minutes. If a team has not win by that time, the game should stop and the team that's holding the most strategic town hall will be the faction who wins. A casual skirmish game like that should give to each player who has participated resources like salvage for the losing team and small arms with salvage for the winning team. More on that in number 5. Competitive skirmish match. Woo! They should have limited node and all resources filled with fast respawn rate of like 15 to 10 minutes, limited basic items and small arms in strategic town. This time the time of the technology of the game that will be set in will be randomly selected. So it will still be in between the three choice, the early war, the mid war and the end war, the late war. The time for those competitive skirmish should not be more than 80 minutes. If a team has not win by that time, the game, the time, the time, the team, the tomb, the team that's holding the most strategic town hall will be the faction who wins. Competitive skirmish like that should give more than a casual match to each player, but I'm pretty sure it should be the same reward. Because we don't know which technology has been unlocked yet inside of the World Conquest. So the reward for those skirmish match can only contain starting war items and small arms. But more in that. Number 5. Resistance phase in home region. Woo! Halfway done. The resistance phase has seen some good improvement over the year, from being the training phase to now the resistance phase. Players are usually taking this time to train and try some new tactics, maybe some new building. Um, Players are usually using this time to try some new tactics and uh, to improve their base building layout. But now that the game is getting more player, the 14 hours break feels just about right. I can go to sleep and wake up, BAM! A new war has just started. I love it. But I think the resistance phase could be used for much more than just sleeping. I feel we should be able to vote for the next World Conquest map layout during the resistance phase, making Foxhole a game fully driven by its community. And to achieve this, I think we need the power to vote for the next World Conquest map layout. And uh, since the dev well just uh, created this new system where they can pre-made the town for the next war, let's say, and just save that and bring it up when they need it, they, they can make like map layout already pre-made so we can decide and maybe not be able to vote for the same war that's just same map layout that's just passed. So uh, it's always a new one. Sometimes it's gonna be a full map, sometimes only side, only top. It, re it really all depends on the community and I think uh, now is the best time to do it and the resistant phase is the best time to do it or it could be cool if uh, during the resistant phase uh, it's the time to try out that skirmish mode that I was talking about inside of the last number uh, yeah I think uh, having something different only for the resistant phase could uh, keep all the population and uh, make us like uh, want to be in the fucking resistant phase it will be really cool it will really be nice and refreshing before a new war is starting Here's something I would also like inside of the resistant phase. At the beginning of the resistant phase, all clans who have claim a town during the war that's just finished will lose their claim and will have to reclaim it during the resistant phase or at the start of the new war. Making clans keep on playing during the resistant phase because they want to claim their town, maybe try out that new mode, but claiming a town during the resistant phase will make them train in this area, will make uh, cities get populated even if there's nothing over there. Climbing a city doesn't do anything for the clan, it only tells other player from where the clan is gonna operate. Note that only the towns that will stay inside of the next world conquest map layout will stay claimed. So basically if you have claimed a town for the next war to begin during the resistance phase and it's not part of the next world war map layout, uh, well, the claim won't stay. There's so much potential for the home region, it's a really cool concept, but uh, let's stay realistic for the things that they can do now. While looking at the map of the world conquest from the home region, we should be able to see stats and data, like how many deaths per hour inside of a region, just like how Foxhole's uh, website stats works. Great website, by the way. Inside the home region, I think there should be a Twitch integration. <laughs> 
inside the home region showing off all the people that's streaming currently streaming Foxhole. This would make waiting for a queue a little bit less painful and it will make us content creator get discovered more easily. This could be located next to the state of war tent, it could be anywhere, there's a lot of place inside of the home region. I think having a tent with a bunch of TV all stack on top of each other would be really cool. If there's a clan system, now it's been announced, it's called the regiment system. Uh, once it's gonna be out, I hope so that it's gonna be, uh, we're only gonna be able to create a regiment inside of the home region at some location. Giving a tent only for that, if the skirmish match is available for all the public, and not only for the tournaments. All reward earned by playing these game modes should all be sent back to the home region storage depot where you can go and decide to send back those resources that you earned inside of matches while waiting in queue into a friendly backline region. So once you access the storage depot you can decide at which backline friendly territory region you want to send this back to. And you can decide if you want to keep it as private or public. Making all those players that decided to go into their home region and play the new game mode skirmish or stuff like that be able to help out the current war and the world conquest by sending out s supplies could be really cool most of the time player will do skirmishes match uh, only because there is a queue so making them uh, gain reward and supplies to help the front line and to help the current war is really great this is gonna give them an option at least there's one more thing that i want to say about home region is the game is getting more and more attraction and players every day because of content creators streamers and steam sales for sure and therefore the game should be ready to be able to deal with a large amount of player connecting at the same time because once this game is go out of early access I can tell you right now Foxhole for his development phase didn't need a lot of player it needed a steady baseline of connected player but not 10,000 player just to test the game now the game is pretty much done it's starting to really look like a, <clears throat> a 1.0 you know and therefore the game should be ready to be able to deal with a large amount of connection at the same time imagine 1,000 player in both faction trying to join the own region at the same time because the war is starting just like a normal war. And 2,000 player for MMO is not a lot. Imagine 20,000 player playing Foxhole, making a total of 10,000 in each faction. I know the devs has pushed the numbers to 200 players per region, making a total of 100 versus 100. It's super cool. But I'm not sure for the home region how much player it can handle. Is it 200 players? It can probably be a little bit more because there's no building and no stuff that will make everybody lags. But I think the home region should be ready to deal with massive amount of players trying to connect at the same time therefore we need some instances meaning when the home region is full next player that connects it get transferred to another instances it's the same the play stays the same it only affects the people that you see around you and player can switch up from instances as they want so let's say they're teleport at the, f that the second one they click at the first one they can still travel over there if a player has left or if it's full it's gonna tell them that it's full he's gonna try back in a couple of minutes you know that will be only if you wants to see the player that he wants to see around him maybe he's looking for friends or stuff like that those instances should be created as player connect and if a wrong home region gets full at least there's another instances that pop out another instance so at least player can wait over there and not just get an error message from inside of the character uh, selection more on that on number two number four edge of the screen combat this is just a reminder to the dev team, we're still trying to make content with the edge of the screen problem for years now. And the main reason why people don't watch Foxhole on Twitch service or like other streaming service, it's mostly because of what we talk in number 9. But also because most of the combat is usually done by looking in the corner of your screen for a long time and waiting for a kill. I think we can all agree this is not the most exciting thing to watch. And yet not long time ago, the dev did some adjustment to the aiming mechanic on how far on how far you can see when aiming with a weapon but I still think that we should be able to see a little bit further because right now we have to rotate the camera almost every time we want to aim at someone I think not being able to see at the end of your aiming dot when looking in front of you of your character meaning on top of your screen or maybe at the bottom even sometimes on the side of your screen it feels really weird to have to aim in the very end of the corner of your screen to see to be able to see the end of your aiming dot 
from what I can tell and how it feels when I'm playing Foxhole, it feels like if we were like a zoom in a 10%, the camera of the of your soldier is zoom in like for 10%, and if the camera of the player would be at zero zoomed, I think we would be able to see things like this. Here's how I think the camera should work. You place it in the angle that you like, and that's all. And that's all. That's it. And from there we should be able to see equally in every corner of the screen when aiming. I mean, at least at the end of your aiming dot. So basically what we want to do is not having the action over here, but more over here. This will be fixed by just increasing the viewing range when aiming with a weapon just a little bit further, making the action not only in the edge of the corner of your screen, but a little bit more close and more satisfying gameplay to see. I'm going to reveal the biggest foxhole secret. Are you boys and girls ready? Player have to change the resolution of the game to 1280 by 960 to be able to see the normal view range and now you can see the range as you normally should but you can't in the normal resolution because the camera is zoomed by let's say a 10% making all the action stuck in the corner of your screen if we could zoom out for that 10% and be able to see like in this super resolution this would fix so much problem for the edge of the screen combat and uh, at least would be able to us give us content creator uh, a little bit more accessibility to see like the fight and record some good gameplay to make uh, a cool montage. This is terrible. You see what we have here? A sacrifice of quality visual for in-game view range advantage or a good quality picture, good graphic, but to be forced to play Foxhall and zoom in by 10% and to be stuck to watch combat at the edge of your corner of your screen and fight with the camera to have to turn around every time. Bad resolution but be able to see the game as it was meant to be or be stuck with the edge of the screen combat problem but having a good graphic. You see what we have here? It's like if we were playing an esports game when uh, you lower down all your graphics just to see better the enemy. It's crazy. We need all this mashed together. All right, we need the viewing range of that resolution of the special res and we need it inside of all, every other resolution or maybe add an action camera inside of the setting that when player clicks on it it would keep the camera as it is right now zooming this brings me to my next subject I think the ability to zoom inside a foxhole by scrolling down the wheel on your mouse would be greatly appreciated by content creator and a lot of regular players. Hear me out, I'm not talking about the ability to zoom out, but the ability to see closer. We know that the models in foxhole are not the best looking ones, but it's okay because they have their own style and we love them this way. The zoom ability would be great for scenarios indoors and some for outdoors activity. I think zoom in was my first request when I started playing the game in 2017 or 18 and here we are in 2021 talking about this inside of a top 10 request for the game it's crazy it's been years I want to zoom inside of this game just give us for me when I play a video game from top view like we have in Foxhole I usually put the camera in a certain kind of way and I don't touch it after that I'm only going to change the angle if I get inside of a building or of a certain city with a high building and I'm not seeing good my character or if there's something cool I would zoom in the camera and move the angle to see it better and appreciate the lore or the art style of the game it's simple we need it it would be gladly appreciated as a content creator and a frontline builder I want to see my bob please let me see my bob this is a MMO we want freedom we want it number three now it's getting interesting in-game stats and steam achievements as the game is getting closer to closer to release, aka leaving early access, it's cool. It takes four to five years to make a game. Maybe sometimes less, maybe sometimes more. But it's usually around that. Player can't wait for Steam achievement and more personal stats. Now I understand the dev is trying to keep all the stats for the weapon, the vehicle, or even the player elf in the dark 
for the realistic part of the game. It's cool, we got Wikipedia. Where you need to listen to your heart to know how much ammo clip you will need to suppress the foxhole or a garrison rifle. Knowing how much HE grenade you will need to take down that building that you just suppressed. And also you just don't know how many band-aids you're gonna need for that mission. And for how much health they heal you. Maybe 15%, 20%, 30%, or 100% of your health. So you're taking no chance and you grab 7 of them. Because you thought you could handle a couple of bullets before going down like any other other video game you would have time to heal you but you were wrong because this is an hardcore realistic tactical massively multiplayer persistent world warfare game where all the items have no stats but that might be a video for another day today I want to talk about personal stats aka character profile and steam achievements aka medals the community has come up for years with great ideas about this subject and there's one particularly made by waffle highlighting pretty much everything I was going to talk about so let's check it out. Let's start with the middle of the screen first. Note that this menu should not be the character selection. This is only the character profile window we see here and should be accessible at any time in game by pressing a simple key. Metal should be attached to your Steam account and those metal should never be reset or lost after an ongoing war is finished you use another character the medals should be carried over to about whether if you're playing on colonials or warden we can see the profile selection as a little bit more depth like your favorite gun your favorite vehicle and this should be updated as you play profile section should also never be reset after an ongoing war is finished this will make you understand better and show other players what type of infantry and car driver you are this feature will come very handy when it comes to arranging squad and operation or maybe this should be a Thing that you can pick like uh, you can select your favorite gun or your favorite car to drive and not showing the car that you drive the most or the gun that you use it the most I don't know the medals are linked to the steam account and stay forever with you on any character that you play this would be to show off player all the things that you accomplish in the game even if it's not on the current character that you're playing and for the profile section it's different for any character that you have and stay forever even after a ongoing war is finished but more on that in number two the character profile must be accessible by other characters this will give tools to the community so they can make a background check on players so they can see if he's legit, if he has any metal. Seeing the character profile of someone should be simple as right clicking on their name in the world chat and select the character profile option or right clicking on someone next to you should also give this same menu. Plus when you're right clicking on someone next to you we should also have a little bit more option like trade, dual, but more on that in another video. This is really important. I'm sick that every time that my girlfriend kills me everyone sees it in the chat I want to be able to duel by looking inside of the clan inside of the regiment window and going inside of find clans tab and selecting a clan in the hierarchy section we should be able to see the player list from that clan and from there we should be able to click on each one of them and we should be able to see the same menu as if you would done it in any other way inside of the world chat or someone next to you since they updated the monument park we lost all the stats and now its top 2050 I think player from the past war we need a place to be recognized for all the efforts that we put into each conquest war I think the player character and being able to access it throughout many ways or even finding somebody character profile by looking inside of the clan tab finding a clan that he's in and looking inside of the player list from that clan and being able to see the character profile even if the character is offline is a perfect start and yeah it would be awesome to have the top 2050 50 player of the ongoing war in its own window this would really drive player to be good and not only run in in front line without thinking twice underneath you can see your contribution this is your personal contribution for the current ongoing war I'm dying to have those in the game and we also need one for the medics let's not forget our red crosses and on how many times you have died yup this won't be pretty but we're all here to improve together those stats should reset every war we also need stats for the regiment system 
we should see the war contribution of each clan for the ongoing war. When looking in the clan's windows and finding a clan's, when looking inside of the description, there should also be a where you can see the war contribution for the clans of the ongoing war. Because they said that regiment when created will stay and carried over wars and wars. So regiment will get less populated and won't be active. And therefore we need a war contribution system for the clan so we can see uh, which one is active during this ongoing war that you want to play. And we should have a leaderboard of all the clans down below. The top five clans and after that all the clans below we can see it. If a clan d didn't contribute any it should not appear on the leaderboard. And war contribution inside of a clan should be earned by any soldiers, action, killing an enemy vehicle or soldiers, destroying enemy buildings, doing logistic, and for any vehicle build, pretty much any action when you're inside of a clan will give contribution war uh, to the clans. But any supplies, cook and prepared will not give until it's been submitted into public storage but anything cooked with the bee mats or stuff like that uh, when you prepare supplies it will only give contribution if you deposit as public somewhere note that all action also gives point to your personal contribution private or not the global statistic should be in the contribution section. I think there should be a tab on the side of your contribution section where you can switch in between your contribution or your clan contribution and the global statistic. I would remove that war status. This is already shown in the world conquest map and eliminating those two window would make more space for medals to be shown to the account status. The account statistic should be displayed in the profile section in another tab just like your contribution tab works there is so much more stuff that we can talk about here but the point is really replayability and give us us the player more chance to gain wealth fame and fortune number two character creation and servers when going in the play section if it's your first time playing the ongoing war you will have to make a choice in between the two factions just like always but i think having a picture or concept art of soldiers and vehicles side by side show enough the faction aesthetic could be really cool and i'm not talking about the picture from the top view that we have right now i want to see a concept art of them closer we want to get to know them after all it's us even if the soldier have no face no nose hell no mouth player won't care as long as the game has a special aesthetic attached to it i know the character model has a face i know that but most of the player never saw it i think when clicking on one of the two faction we could see the tech tree of the current ongoing war this would be really cool and it could give player the ability to make the right choice on the decision on which faction they want to play this war according to the playstyle when showing off the technology tree if maybe when hovering the mouse over an icon from the tech tree we could see a short video this is a big deal and a lot of work i understand making all those little video i understand but why not let the community help with those video for free in return to have their name placed inside of the credit section of the game I think it's a fair trade. Since the game is driven by the community, why not let them participate in the creation with the things that we can all do? Create a video and submit them. Since we're on the topic of the tech tree, we should really be able to see the tech tree and those short video at any time in game by pressing a simple key that will open a window to see the technology tree. Most of the new player doesn't know about the technology tree at all and most of the veteran player doesn't fucking care. This left a small portion of people that actually interact with it. So I think being able to see it at any time during in-game when playing will get more people to interact with it and being able to see what is the next item to unlock so player can prepare tactics to use in the upcoming days or hours. Most of the player will never go look inside of the engineering center just to see what items will unlock next. They will usually ask inside of the world chat and most of the time somebody will answer. But having a window that we can all access at any time will encourage more player to use those tech centers and participate more to the technology race. Or at least anticipate the next meta for defending or attacking, which is what the game is all about. The game is centered around the technology tree and there's 
there's not enough attention around this. All right, let's get back to the subject. Once the faction is chosen, you must create a character or use the one that you already created from the past war, if you have chosen the same faction. The character creation should be about choosing the character models, maybe having a choice in between one to four model for each faction. Hell, the division has done that before and it's a triple A game. Or maybe a deeper system like in World of Warcraft or a lot of other MMORPG that's done with facial recognition. <laughs> facial customization. For now, we have a little bit of lore hidden inside of the world. I love that. It's a great concept. But I think since this is a game about the player and being the story and the content, and since there is no class inside of the game, I think we should be able to choose from which hometown we come from, aka where your character is originally from. And I think we should be able to choose from any city inside of the game. Choosing a city when you're creating a character could really make the region and city more important. Because because your character is from the city that whether you're trying to invade or defend making things personal once your character is created you can now join the ongoing war on the server chosen all your exploit like personal stats contribution to the ongoing war or your status inside of a clan should be linked to this character the only thing that should stay after a war has ended and a new one has started is all your character created inside of the character selection list and the total contribution that you have done with this character and your profile section showing off your favorite weapon your favorite vehicle the medals is attached to your steam account so this is good for any character and la tienne all right i don't want to go too deep in the subjects because i'm sure that the devs already have plenty of idea if they want to make a character creation so i don't want to hurt myself i don't want to hurt you guys and girls this is really uh, one of my top things that i would like to see in the game I also want to talk about the servers, as we know Foxhall has a small community. But this doesn't mean that there's not a lot of player that owns the game. I would say there's about 20,000 player that owns the game, if not more. And let me tell you, if those 20,000 player decide to connect all at the same time, we're going to be in deep shit for the servers. I recommend having multiple phase for the home region that act as server, meaning that when the home region almost reaches its maximum capacity of player, it would be around 200 player or maybe 400 player I'm not sure how much the re home region can take but when it would get too close there would be another phase that would create automatically so for all the next player that trying to connect and if their home region is full they would get transferred into the phase 2 nothing would change so players should be able to change between those phases as they want if they get created if home region get maximum capacity of players <laughs> dev make sure to give something to do while we wait for Q because we're in for a long run and this would not be the only place I would play server. When choosing your character inside of the character list section of the game, we should be able to choose which server we're going into. Maybe attach characters to server even. So right now we don't have a lot of player playing Foxholes, but if the game gets a big boost of population, we might need some servers. So for now we would only, we would only see the dev branch server and the live server that we can switch on and the server list should expand as more players start to play the game. But this is a system that should be already implanted in the game, even though if it's not used, because one day uh, you wake up and the game is overpopulated and you don't know why. We should be able to see what state of the war in the character selection list before joining inside of the server. This will give the opportunity to the player to make the right decision on which character they want to use depending on the states of the war. Maybe a city of one of your characters is getting attacked, so you're gonna take this guy to defend, or maybe you feel like the war needs some supply. Even if we can't see the supply inside of the base from this section, you can guess because you're a natural. And so you take your character that you only do logi with him and he never has a kill and he never got killed before because you're working on a character that doesn't have any death. So you're taking him. And there is many more example that why we should have a character list and multiple characters for the faction. I don't think we should have uh, the same details that when we look inside of the State of the War 10 map. I think it should be a little bit more like... It would be basically a map where you see the State of the War but with no uh, intelligence reported. Like the Foxhole website stats. But in-game, while we're choosing our character, it would be crazy cool. On a little table showing off the information on the map. I can already see content creators making time-lapse only on of this table of the full war invasion. And if the game 
game gets more population, and I'm not talking about crazy number, only like a 10,000 or 20,000 player daily signing in, we will need servers. And on each of these servers, the ongoing war should be at a different timeline of the tech tree. So let's say server 1 is at the early state, server 2 is at the mid, and server 3 is at the end war state of the technology. This would give the opportunity of sometimes player only want to play like some gameplay with the tank. He will join uh, the server that is uh, more advanced in the war technology. This would give at least options to player that only likes to play the game at the end of the war or the mid war or the early war. I love to play the starting war state. Or sometime if the ongoing war on the server that you play is finished and now it's in the resistant phase, you can go into another server and keep on playing to help the to help your favorite faction over there too. So for now at least, even if the game is not doesn't have a big population, we should be at least able to change in between the live server and the dev branch server. Here we are. Number one, character skins and outfit. There is two type of player. The first type of player says that the skins should give a little passive ability depending on which skin you're wearing. We're gonna call them skins but it's outfit. Like a medic's outfit should make you heal a little bit faster. A combat engineer skins should make you build a little bit faster. And skins for logistic players should make you able to gather a little bit faster. And last but not least, the soldier skins should make you be able to do sprinting a little bit longer. And there is the other type of player that only wants skins or outfit purely for cosmetic and the look on their vehicle or items so they can show the world the effort that they put into this game. Me? Honestly? I just want fucking skins or outfit, that's all. I don't care if it's gonna bring passive ability, I don't care if it's gonna only be for cosmetic, I need them, it's been for too long. I'm looking at the same characters, we're all the same, we're clones, help us. We've been playing Foxhole for more than four years with no aesthetic customization. This is making the game very, very static for the visual. As the year is passing, every time I see something, it's the same. It gets repeated. Having skins and outfit and a character creation is a quick fix for all this visual static of the game. I love the game. Don't get me wrong. I really love it or else I would not make this video. It's I'm talking with my heart right now. <laughs> The dev knows that the player wants them, the player, the dev too wants them. We've been talking about this in dev stream since 2017 and they think outfit and skins is really cool. But back then they didn't have time to work on this. They had to put out big update to show the world that the game is gonna be something epic and unique one day. Now that all this is done and it's behind us and we have a lot of content inside of the game like item, vehicle, regions to play in, they can now focus on little stuff like this before the official launch of the game. Therefore, I think the dev will introduce outfit this year. They better. Now I'm not talking about paid skin. We all know the dev politics on this. Here's how skins and outfits should work in the game. Let me start off right now by saying I don't think you will see any super fly, crazy skins with crazy rainbow color. No, because they want to stay true to the aesthetic of the game. And that's cool, that's perfectly normal. I think the only time we should be able to buy skins with real money should be when there is an ongoing event for the current war. An event should maybe last around one conquest war, two conquest war, or maybe a fixed date of a month or more. These skins that you can buy with real money is related to the event and should only be able to get during the time of the event, just like skins is sold in any other video game. Those events should normally be for founding of a real life charity event that maybe happen once a year or less. Once the event is finished, player who has supported the event and got some skin out of it, you can still wear all those skins even when the event is done. You got them for life. What's up, buddy? Hello. Skins can be things like a different shade of color for the uniform or a mark on the helmet of the soldier or a medal visible on the player main outfit. For sure events like Halloween or Christmas should give some really nice skins, not just normal ones. Maybe a soldier cover it in snow. And for Halloween maybe a missing arms, like we only see the bones, kind of like a skeleton underneath. Could be really nice just to have some good skins at uh, cool events like this. I think most paid skins should always be about supporting the game or supporting a real life 
uh, event or something like that. A crisis, a charity event. But I think a season pass would be better to support the game and the dev team. But that might be a video for another day. Giving players skins, taking their money, making a better world with it, it's so much rewarding and everybody wins. Example, for an event only related to the game, during the month of the Foxhall competitive leagues, we could buy skins related to the teams that is in the competition. All the money gained during this event would be the prize pool for the winning team, making the event of the Foxhall competitive leagues really interesting because we're gonna care and we're gonna vote and we're gonna pick our team that we are hoping that it's gonna win the clan the regiment and we never know the amount of money that the prize pool can make now that we got the paid skin out of the way we can start talking about why we're all here yes basic action earns you skins I think after a certain amount of action, players should earn skins. Like, for the soldier skin, we should unlock a new skin after. The first 500 player kills earns you the first skins. The first 1000 player kill makes you earn a skin. And it keeps on going. For the medic skin, we should unlock it after. 500 player bandage or save. And 1000 player saved or bandage. And it keeps on going. For the combat engineer skins, we should unlock it after. 500 structure build. 1000 structure build. And it keeps on going. For the logi skin, we should unlock it after. 1000 node collected should make you earn your first skin. And 2000 node should make you earn your second skin and it keeps on going. For the vehicle drivers, we should earn a skin after. Driving 100,000 miles should make you earn your first skin and driving 200,000 miles would make you earn your second skin and it would keep on going. Like it or not, Dev, there is five main class in the game. I would say six, but, but I don't want to mess everyone up. Even though if it's not official, if a player is going to look for help on YouTube or Reddit or somewhere, he will most likely write those words and try to go look for tutorial for his role. All the ways that I just mentioned to earn skins are basic actions, but they can all be done in another way. Like the soldier skin can be unlocked based on how many structures or vehicle has been destroyed. Medic skins could be unlocked by how many times they have submit a patient inside of an hospital or drive it the ambulance car for a certain amount of miles. Or combat engineer skins could be unlocked by how many time a player has been uh, repairing a building or driving the CV, the construction vehicle. The Logi skin could be unlocked by how many crates that you have delivered as public inside of a stockpile. Vehicle driver skins could also be unlocked by how many kills that you have while you were inside of a car, or how many times you have repaired a vehicle. What I'm saying here is there is so much potential and possibilities to make a game system that will track the player stats on how many basic actions they have done, making them earn skins by doing basic actions and rewarding the player only for playing. We don't care about the way that we're gonna unlock it. Just find a way and give us the system as fast as you can, guys. Please, dev team, this is like one of the top requested feature in the game. All right, one last thing. Let's talk about vehicle skins and weapon skins. As we know, the new update just released the winter update and just this just bring uh, a lot of new guns to the table and uh, separate the guns to the warden and the colonial. So it's no more longer the same weapons that they have. They have now different type of weapon, but players still want some weapon skins and some vehicle skins and it's perfectly normal. That's, that's the way video games is right now. They should be unlockable by basic action, meaning using a vehicle or using that specific weapon, you will unlock a skin for it one day. There is two ways the skin system can work for the weapons and the vehicles. First way, the skin only display when you're equipping it, meaning if you have a weapon, the skin will only be on it when you have it. If you drop it on the ground, the skin will be not there anymore, vanish. Same thing for the car, if you're standing inside, if you're standing inside of a vehicle, it can have your skin, and if you're out of the vehicle, the skin will disappear. Or the second way, when you're pulling out a vehicle from a storage depot, it comes out with the original skin. You can then apply your skin and it will stay on it, until somebody else slap a skin on it. And the only way to get to, get to the normal skin back, it will be to submit it to the storage depot. Same thing for weapons, when you're first pulling out a rifle, let's say, you can apply your skin on it, and then if you leave 
leave it on the ground, your buddy can pick it up. But if this weapon is returned back to a stockpile, it will be reset to his original skin. This could be simple as this. All right, that's a lot of stuff. That, that was a big video. I know everything I'm saying looks super, like, not complicated, but it is. It's super complex behind all this. There is a system that needs to be created. I understand. But I'm only sharing the voice of the community plus some of my own ideas. Anyway, I just gave a lot of suggestions. This was a big video and uh, most of this feature might never end up inside of the game. This is only my ideas and some ideas from the community. The community is everything inside of this game. For I lost hope for all video games not long time ago and Foxhole made me believe there is still hope. Uh, it was super cool. I really liked it to do this video because it's something that I wanted to talk about for a long time. Uh, now my only game that I'm playing is mainly Foxhole or else I'm creating. So this game is everything for me and I wanted to see in the healthiest position it can be. I have a lot of hope for the future with uh, all the population that we just saw. We just hit the 3000 player connected at the same time. I know it's really not a lot for a game, but uh, it's a lot for Foxhole and it's getting there, guys. It's it's cool, it's great to see. I'm happy to see all those new faces and uh, I can't wait to get back inside of the game. Don't bash me for all the things that I said. If you got another suggestions, if you, if you think that I missed something, be sure to write it down in, in the comment section. I'm sure that the dev will take a small look at this just to see how I get response. I wanna say thank you to the dev team. Thank you to Clapfoot because they made something that was not existent before. They made the first MMO PWW, a massively multiplayer online persistent world warfare. <laughs> This is, this is really cool. And there is no other game like this. It's his first of this kind, a new species. I gotta go finish this edit now. It's gonna be a big video. So thanks to everybody. I'm Braz and uh, all the links are in the descriptions to follow me everywhere. Support the channel, it helps me a lot. All right, catch you all later. It's Braz signing out, peace.